Today we're going to cover Numero's tips on using visuals. Now, when designing an analytics dashboard, there's a lot to consider and there are many visualization options to choose from. We're actually going to cover six tips that look at some of the more subtle ways you can enhance how users experience and interpret the data presented in your visualizations. So we're actually going to start with a discussion on sizing, then we'll move into layout, including a zero baseline on your reports, using suitable proportions, avoiding slanted labels, and then we'll wrap up on why we think it's important to always order the data within your visualizations as well. Here we are in Power BI taking a look at Numero's finance dashboard template. This will be a helpful guide as we discuss sizing of visuals specifically. Now on this dashboard, we have several different types of visualizations and you know, they're representing different levels of detail. So our KPIs are showcasing really high level information at the top of the dashboard here. And as we work our way down the dashboard, this line and stack bar chart, they're showing off a little more granular detail, a little more information trends over time over different groups of data. And so we generally recommend that the KPIs be much smaller in size as they don't have as much data to represent. We just want a high level glimpse at those. And then when we do use the visualization options like a bar chart and a line chart, we want to give those visualizations more room on the page so that they can fully tell their stories so that they can fully, you know, put into a visualization all of the information that they are trying to show. So generally, you know, just recommend keeping those KPIs small and then making more room on the dashboard for those larger styled visualizations like the stacked bar chart. And also, you know, you can see on this dashboard, we have some really nice even margins going on as we navigate down the page. Just be mindful that you're not putting too many visualizations on a dashboard. You know, if we tried to cram a few more reports down in this bottom quadrant, we might end up in a situation with uneven margins. And, you know, that could make our canvas look a little messy. It could make the overall dashboard feel a bit disorganized. So just ensure you're not putting too many visuals on the page when we talk about sizing as well. And as far as sizing, if you're feeling a little confused about what should be a smaller scale report on the page versus a larger scale report, we actually do have a sizing guide that can help with that. You know, I talked about the KPIs being smaller scale, but cards, filters, donuts that are showcasing high level data and gauges are also great visualization types to have be a little smaller on the dashboard. And for those larger scale ones, uh, bar charts, area charts, maps, granular donuts, uh, matrix, waterfall, scatter plot, tree map, those tables, obviously those take up a lot of space, ribbons, line columns, and funnels. Those are all great visualization types. And we want to show off the data that you're comparing in those visualizations. So give them a little bit more room, have those be larger scale on your dashboards. And if it helps when organizing the layout of a dashboard, we like to follow a hierarchy where we have the highest level data at the top of the dashboard and then working our way down to the bottom of the dashboard, we're going to get to the lowest level of granularity in the data. So again, with those KPIs representing high level data, they should be small, easy to scan and at the top of the dashboard. In our central part of the dashboard, we should have our trend-based visuals. That, you know, they should take up the largest part of the dashboard, really, as they present more detailed data. And then as we work our way to the bottom of the dashboard, this is a great place for data tables where we're really getting into the most granular, raw data that maybe doesn't present super well in a visualization, but you know we still want that data to be represented in a data table. That's gonna be our lowest level of granularity, kind of just everything in that big data table at the bottom. So follow that hierarchy again. Think about highest level of information at the top, working our way down into the lowest lowest level of granularity. Now our next tip is to include a zero baseline where applicable. 
So in this example, we're looking at a report on interest rates. We're starting with that zero baseline and running up to 4%. And we can see from 2016 to 2020, interest rates have maintained a pretty stable value across each bar represented for each year in this particular chart. Um, but if we weren't starting with that zero baseline, let's say we were showing the specific interest rates from 3.2% to 3.26%, uh, there's actually quite a large disparity between those values and what we're seeing represented in this bar graph. But this is a little misleading because those are very small percentage changes, very small differentials in each of these values. But the way this visualization reads without that zero baseline is that interest rates have been hiking at a pretty tremendous rate over the past, you know, four years or so. So, you know, where applicable, just make sure that you're including that zero baseline because you don't want to be in a situation where your, your graph is reading as something misleading as people first look at it. They might make one assumption versus fully understanding that interest rates over time have been pretty stable. Now, our next tip is to use suitable proportions for the visualization type that you've chosen. Now, on the right-hand side here, we can see the sales performance line graph, and it's showcasing each of the months of the year. We can see all of them clearly. We can see how these values have changed over the course of the year. This has enough room to really do the job of showcasing sales performance over the course of the year. On the left-hand side, however, we've kind of shrunk it to, to fit into maybe a smaller space on the dashboard. We now have to scroll across the bottom to even see all of the values across the year. And so we really want to prevent overstretching or shrinking graphs like this because it inhibits the ability to showcase the data in the way we'd like to see. When we're using labels, we want to avoid using slanted labels or what's showcased here on the left where these are actually on a bit of a tilt. We recommend using the labels more on a, a zero degree axis so that they're not tilted very parallel with the bars here. We can very clearly read what each of these bars represent and our text displays in a very clear format. Now, when we use slanted labels, it can cause readers to misinterpret information. So again, recommending that zero degree axial tilt, just ensuring that this is as legible as possible for the end user. Our final tip is to always order the data that's represented in your visualizations. So on the left-hand side here, we have this region sales performance report, and it is not ordered. And this is actually adding unnecessary complexity. It's a little confusing to tell which region is performing you know, the least well against the other regions. And this should be a very simple uh, you know, determination that you can make immediately when looking at a report. So we can tell that West is performing the best, but from there it gets a little jumbled because this is not ordered. On the right-hand side, we have this ordered in a, de a descending fashion, and you can order your reports in ascending, descending, whatever works best for you, but just make sure that you order it because we can tell on the right-hand side, it's very clear that South is not performing as well as the other regions. And it takes a little bit too long to think about and figure that out on the, the left-hand version of this report where we're not using any of that ordering. That's it for today's tutorial on our tips for using visuals. But we have all of these tips available in our blog. And if you're looking to dive further into dashboard design best practices, we also have handbooks available that go into much more detail on crafting the perfect BI dashboard. And you know, of course, we have dashboard templates available for download that take all of these tips into account. But we're so grateful that you tuned in. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you on our next tutorial.